Yes. Their action. No action. Oh, wait, do that again. I'm sorry. Okay. Do one more time. What? I'll make a motion to come okay. out of executive session. Second. Roll call. Sabrina. Yes. Vicky. Yes. Tony. Yes. Their action. No action. Oh, it wasn't on. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. Have a great day. Thank you. 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 Council of Government, Ohio Means Jobs, Center Operation Operator, and Adult Dislo Dislocated Worker Services. Second. Roll call. Tony? Yes. Vicky? Yes. Sabrina? Yes. The Board of Commissioners agrees to enter into agreement to certify peat recovery support program between Board of Commissioners on behalf of Portage County Jobs and Family Services and Kevin Coleman, Coleman Professionals, Inc. Second. Roll call. Tony? Yes. Vicky? Yes. Sabrina? Yes. Board of Commissioners agrees to accept the bid and reward the contract to project number 81-2160 Atwater Water Treatment, Atwater Wastewater Treatment Plant, WWPTP, Clarified Improvements of Portage County Regional Sewer District. Second. Roll call. Tony? Yes. Vicky? Yes. Sabrina? Yes. Board of Commissioners agrees to amend the resolution 21-0323 to enter into an agreement between Portage County Board of Commissioners and Portage County Regional Planning Commission for Community Planning Services for Comprehensive Plan 2050. Second. Roll call. Tony? Yes. Vicky? Yes. Sabrina? Yes. Board of Commissioners agrees to enter into an agreement between Portage County Board of Commissioners and Portage County Regional Planning Commissions. Community Planning Services for Vision Plan 2050. Second. Roll call. County. Yes. Vicky. Yes. Sabrina. Yes. Board Commissioners agrees to set proposal date and request qualifications for consulting services, oversight, and compliance for the American Rescue Plan funds. Portage County Commissioners. Second. Roll call. County. Yes. Vicky. Yes. Sabrina. Yes. Board Commissioners agrees to approve the spec specifications and set bid dates for Freedom Township. ADA project, Freedom Township, Ohio. Second. Roll call, Tony. Yes. Vicky. Yes. Sabrina. Yes. Board of Commissioners right. agrees to clarify the necessity of purchase of a vehicle used by the Portage County Homeland Security Emergency, Emergency Management. Second. Roll call, Tony. Yes. Vicky. Yes. Sabrina. Yes. Board of Commissioners agrees to enter into an equipment lease agreement between Portage County Board of Commissioners and the CCT Finance Portage County Prosecutor. Is that for copies? Do, do we know what that's for? Is that a copy? I it doesn't oh, say. Oh, is that for the um, prosecutor's office? office? Yeah, that's for the uh, uh, copy or printers. The night vision? No, that's no, 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 that's for the sheriff's prep with the night vision. Uh, prosecutor's grant. Yes. Uh, CCT. Sure. CCT financial. I'm gonna con Joanne. I think it is only because copier leases are normally sixty-three months. It's a weird. Oh, oh, man. You have not gone home. <laughs> hey, I got a couple things that have to do before I go. Good. Hey, quick question for you. Um, number nine resolution. It says that um, equipment lease for the prosecutor's office. Is that for like copiers and printers? Yes, ma'am. Okay, go home. Bye. <laughs> All right, bye. She sounds like she needs to be in bed. <coughs> she looks like that yesterday. I don't think I get over it. Got that summer cold thing. Yeah. Okay. Second. 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 <laughs> Roll call. Tony. Yes. Vicky. Yes. Sabrina. Yes. Huh? Joe, Department of Finance. What? <coughs> Anything within the resolution, Joe? I mean, everything pretty standard except for the um, easiest ten thousand. I have a question. Okay, yeah, everything for one through five, right, is correct. Okay. Board of Commissioners agrees to approve the Thursday, August 12, 2021, bills ACH payments as presented by the County Auditor and reviewed by the Department of Budget and Financial Management. Second. Roll call. County. Yes. Vicki. Yes. Sabrina. Yes. Board of Commissioners agrees to approve the Thursday, August 12, 2021, wire, wire transfer for health benefits as presented by the County Auditor and reviewed by the Department of Budget and Financial Management. Second. Roll call. Tony. Yes. Vicki. Yes. Sabrina. Yes. Board of Commissioners agrees to approve the August 12, 2021, 
Journal vouchers as presented by the County Auditor and reviewed by the Department of Budget and Financial Management. Second. Roll call. Tony? Yes. Vicky? Yes. Brina? Yes. Board of Commissioners agrees to approve the Thursday, August 12, 2021, then and now certification as presented by the County Auditor and reviewed by the Department of Budget and Financial Management. Second. Roll call. Tony? Yes. Vicky? Yes. Sabrina? Yes. The Board of Commissioners agrees to approve the Thursday, August 19, 2021, bills, <laughs> ACH payments as presented by the County Auditor and reviewed by the Department of Budget and Financial Management. Second. Roll call. Tony? Yes. Vicky? Yes. Sabrina? Yes. The Board of Commissioners agrees to approve the Thursday, August 19, 2021, wire transfer for health benefits as presented by the County Auditor reviewed by the Department of Budget and Financial Management. Second. Roll call. Tony? Yes. Vicky? Yes. Sabrina? Yes. The Board of Commissioners agrees to approve the Thursday, August 19, 2021, journal vouchers as presented by the County Auditor and reviewed by the Department of Budget and Financial Management. Second. Roll call. County. Yes. Vicky. Yes. Sabrina. Yes. The Board of Commissioners agrees to approve the Thursday, August 19, 2021, then announced certification as presented by the County Auditor and reviewed by the Department of Budget and Financial Management. Second. Roll call. County. Yes. Vicky. Yes. Sabrina. Yes. Board of Commissioners agrees to amend the General Fund 2021 Annual Appropriation Resolution 20-0802, adopted December 17, 2020. Did you want to comment on that? Um, one is for the reimbursement, and one is for the enterprise giving equipment that we're doing in order. Okay. okay. Second. Roll call, Tony? Yes. Vicky? Yes. Sabrina? Yes. Board of Commissioners agrees to amend the Non General Fund 2021 Annual Appropriation Resolution 20 0803, adopted December 17, 2020. Um, two of them is, is closed out funds, and then one of them is for the SWAT equipment and gear, and then the last one is for Workers' Compensation Fund uh, 2022. Okay. I have a question for the federal equitable for the sheriff. It, what is exactly does that mean, federal equitable sheriff? Is that our share towards like a grant or something? What, uh, what does that mean? No, that is a, that's a special revenue fund. Oh. And it, it, it's just the name of name of the fund. Oh, okay. So okay. I, know, I don't know where the revenue is exactly okay. right now. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. Second. Roll call. Tony. Yes. Vicky. Yes. Sabrina. Yes. Trans Board of Commissioners Bridge Transfer Fund 7201. WCRRP General Administrative Fund 7231 Pro S 2022. Uh, Joe, I have a question on this one. I think it may be an error. Under the resolve, it says that the following transfer will be made in the amount of 450000 but yet it's 100 down there. It should there. be 100000 It should be, okay. So we'll just get that correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. That's all I can. Second. Roll call. Tony? Yes. Vicki? Yes. Brian? Yes. Board agrees to transfer fund 1201 motor vehicles gas tax fund to 1210 safety study. Second. Roll call. County. Yes. Safety. Yes. Sabrina. Yes. The board moves to create a fund 1022 CASA program juvenile court. Second. I just want to make a comment on that. <clears throat> I want to give a, a, a hats off kudos to both uh, Judge. Judge Smith and um, State Rep Pavliga, they're the ones that got this put together and got the funding. So this is a great new addition for Portage County. How much is that fund? They, they give them two or three years for that? I thought it was, can I see, I looked at different things, so I, I'm I not sure if either. it was four, but maybe it's not. I don't know how long it is. I know it's like, I think it's just agrees to use them as a startup. Mm -hmm. I heard from um, from courts that it, it's going to be reviewed every year. Oh, every year. Yeah. There's no there's no end date. Oh, okay, so, 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 so as they're, they're doing. Okay, great. Okay, okay. that is good. Yes. All right, roll call. Tony. Yes. Vicky. Yes. Sabrina. Yes. Board moves to rescind resolution 21-0561, amendment for general fund 2021, annual appropriation resolution number 20-0802. Ado adopted December 17, 2020. Second. Roll call. Tony. Yes. Vicki. Yes. Sabrina. Yes. Board moves to amend the general fund 2021 annual appropriation resolution 20-0802 adopted December 17, 2020. Second. Okay. Roll call. Tony. Yes. Vicki. Yes. Sabrina. Yes. Thank you, Joe. Did Thank you me. have anything uh, else, Mr. Harris, that you have to talk about today or anything? No. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, we got 
Willis Towers, right on the <coughs> Hello. Good, good afternoon, or good morning, I should say. I, I'm rushing the day along. <laughs> I actually found a, a process in our company since we haven't been in our office in 17 months yeah. of how to get these printed and sent to my house to bring to you. Wow. Wow. Something like that. You're all right. Yeah. <laughs> shows that there are some people in that office. Can I have one more? Okay, so uh, thank you for having us on this morning. Uh, again, my name is Doug Brown from Lewis Howard Watson. We've been uh, working with you folks for a number of years on your health care program. Uh, today's meeting is designed to just kind of where we are as far as how the experience is running, what our preliminary budget forecast would be for 2022, benchmarking of what your current uh, health care benefits look like in relation to other government entities and survey data that we have there and talk a little bit about how we want to proceed in the next few weeks. Because as we'll talk in a moment, the experience is spiking a bit at the moment. So I'm going to go through that and show you where that is. So a little bit of background on page two. Uh, just to kind of remind us all where, where we've been the last couple of years. We put the case out to bid in 2019. And uh, it was for the 2020 startup. And we had a three-year arrangement. You typically go out to bid every three. So Medical Mutual prevailed on the medical and the drug and gave you a three-year contract uh, with guaranteed rates. Now, the guarantee, a three-year contract, it just means that they're bound to those rates for three, three years. You're not bound to them for three years. It's not a marriage, but right. um, nonetheless, your, your administrative rates were flat. So your 2019 rates stayed flat in 2020, 2021, and 2022. So that was, that was a good outcome. Uh, we were also pretty excited about the uh, increase in your prescription drug rebates. And this was in the factors of the rebates. So how much you get back on a brand name drug and a specialty drug from manufacturer rebates that they share with you. And they have really been taken off. And so for 2020, you total about 532,000 in rebates, which was up from about 225 the year before. And currently through six months of 2021, you're at 333,000. So we yeah. suspect you're gonna be north of 600. So wow. good news is the rebates are up. Bad news is- A lot of people take drugs. Exactly. So that's a double-edged sword there. But that's a good escalator to have in there because each year of your three-year contract, you're getting about 2% greater unit factors on those rebates. So we were pretty excited about that. And going out to bid next summer, We'll be able to re up those rebate contracts because, in that cycle, the Medical Mutual would have redone their Express Scripts arrangement as well. So, there are probably going to be more rebates in the graph. So, we're pretty excited about getting the level that we got. Unfortunately, we're seeing a little bit of a spike in drugs and we're seeing more rebates. We also increased the specific stop loss level. This is the limit by which the county pays on an individual mm -hmm. claim. Mm -hmm. And it had been 175,000, it raised years. to 200 mm -hmm. for 2020. And then we raised it up again to 225 for 2021. And we'll show you, we'll kind of revisit the 2021 decision as we go through this. Because the case had been running well for the last couple of years, you kept employee contributions that had cost the plan flat. So there were no changes in 20 or 2021. The Delta Dental is a voluntary benefit that's available to employers if they want it. So they had gone into a three-year arrangement with you also starting in 2020. So the uh, rates went up 1.9% for 2020 and stayed that way for 2021. They had a rate cap of 6% for 2022, meaning it could go higher than that. The good news is they've come back with a reduction for you in 2022. Wow. Uh, hear that very often. Yeah. Okay. So it's nice, it's always nice to have a cap because that means it can't go worse versus giving it away. Uh, and if you recall, last year they gave everybody a holiday for uh, yes. because of the pandemic, which they didn't have to do that. So, well, right. like that was very so very what is the rate going to be for 2022 then? It says that it's offering a reduction of 5.8% for 22. So what does that equate to? So, oh, I don't, I don't have It's the, about 75 cents for the single Wow. 
<laughs> so those that are in dental are going to like that. Yeah. And open enrollment. Others that might want to consider dental could, could join during open enrollment. So dental's great news. A um, little bit of background again. Plan design. This is for historical purposes. Uh, for your, Thank you. Your background. These are the plan designs that you have had in since 2018, and the changes that you've made uh, highlighted in red. So again, the experience has been pretty good, pretty steady over this period of time. So you haven't had to make many plan changes. You did make a couple of changes in 2019 to the out-of-pocket maximums. Uh, you also increased your emergency room copay. Mm -hmm. And you added a fourth tier prescription copay in 2020 of $75. Mm -hmm. That's the idea that the specialty drugs are the part of prescriptions that are escalating faster than anything else. Yeah. So your non-specialty stuff that you get, those 30-day supplies and so forth, they're not escalating nearly as bad as the specialties. The specialties are things that are typically injectable type drugs or for illnesses such as multiple sclerosis, arthritis, oh, things that are big ticket items every some month. The, some of those drugs are over $50,000. Yeah. Per shot. Crohn's. Yeah. Crohn's yeah. is another one. So those are the ones that come in at those types of magnitudes, and those are the ones that escalate. And actually, we get a lot of rebates on that, too. So. Do we ever keep track of how many of people on our plan are on those high items? We do. We yeah. do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah. 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 That's part of what uh, the medical mutual folks had at last meeting, but you can also go down any further. So this is a little bit of the background of where you have been. And we haven't had to make significant changes, which is good news. If you go to slide four, this will compare how you compare to three different benchmark categories. The government, public sector, and the Ohio, those are from the Willis Power Watson database. <laughs> we go and update every year in January for all of our clients uh, throughout the country. And then we can categorize it by uh, industry and by geography. So, You'll see it here, we've shown in green where you're richer than any of the other benchmarks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we've also shown you CERB over in the far right for 2021. Your deductible continues to be a lot lower than everybody else's, which is done by design, actually. It was good news, it wasn't needed changing in yeah. the last few years. Uh, this co-insurance maximum, that's really more of a medical mutual term. If you really want to look at it as a medical out-of-pocket, down below the <coughs> third line down. Yes. <laughs> which is about $2,000, $4,000, and that includes the deductible and co-pays and whatnot. That's under all of the others as well. So it's back to the theory that if somebody's using the plan and they pay a higher share, you haven't had to pass that along to those on your plan. You also, though, have a separate drug out-of-pocket maximum. So while we say 2,000, 4,000 is better than all of the other benchmarks, you also have a separate accumulator. That's here at the, the $5,900. Mm -hmm. And that's because the Affordable Care Act requires that all co-pays, co-insurance, deductibles count toward an out-of-pocket limit. So in the past, prescription co-pays were always kind of considered separate and didn't count toward the medical out-of-pocket. Now there has to be a mechanism in your plan that does capture all of that and keeps it within the affordable care limits. So a separate drug maximum was established, $5,900. But to put the two together, you're within the ACA guidelines. So you could argue that, well, part of that $2,000 you're looking at here doesn't include anything from the drug. So we might not be that far off when we out of pocket. It's kind of hard to take that 5900 and say, oh, we're going to take all of it. Because somebody getting the 5900 out of pocket on the drug says, you know, even if they're a specialty user, that's $75. Get the market, 70. You're not going to get there. So. It'd be hard to that. Co-insurance, your plan pays 90%. The others pay 80 um, That's kind of a speed mechanism. You know, if you've got an out-of-pocket maximum, whether you're doing 90% to get there or 80% to get there, it's just kind of, you're going to get to the out-of-pocket maximum. Mm -hmm. if you have those types of claims. Co-pays are a little light, uh, meaning they're better than the market. Uh, same with urgent care. Your emergency room deductible or copay is consistent with uh, the government sector. It's a little on the lower side in Ohio. You're seeing that become a higher 
number for folks that it's kind of a you want to use the emergency room versus other <coughs> avenues, fine, but you might pay a little higher share. So that might be one we look at also. Prescription drugs are fairly consistent with most of them. A little bit more generous on the uh, formal area and non-formal area at the bottom. Although when you look over at CERB for counties, you're right on the nose with that. Mm -hmm. okay. and you're a little bit better than the formal area or the uh, specialty code. What is formal area and non-formal area? That's it. With you using Express Scripts, as your pharmacy benefit manager, that's who Medical Mutual or right. they have a list of manufactured prescription or drugs. Uh -huh. name, name brand. It's okay. like an in-network, if you will. Okay. So those are the preferred ones where they have a better financial deal. You go off of that list, you're a non-formal area. Oh. It's still a name brand, but oh. it's a little more expensive. And it's a little oh. more expensive. So well, how would you do that? Um, it would be uh, probably a decision between the yeah. the Sometimes yeah. people don't react to this way same way for the drugs, mm -hmm. okay. so that's, that's probably like the biggest one. Claritin may be approved, but then Allegra works better and it's not on the approved oh, okay. list. It's the yeah. same drug, does the same thing, right. but yeah. reacts and then to the extent well, that you, if the patient has the ability to make a decision, if it's not tied to a medical reason, mm -hmm. then they decide if they want to pay the higher code pay or lower. Okay. Well, it's part of the, being a better consumer, but it's sure. not a big difference there. Right. $20. So at any rate, the plan has remained very competitive. So as an employer of choice, when folks come in, they would probably look at this and say, very good health plan. Yes. And it's working very well. Which now brings us, unfortunately, to the current state of claims. Um, now, th this is the one I had a question for when they were last time, because 2020, everything tanked. Everything was yeah. low because they couldn't go into the doctor's office. And that's my question was then is how do we compare 2019 and 2021 as reality? Yeah, I'll show you that. In okay. A second. And I think what we have done in our formula too, about our forecast, is how to account for that. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you that margin and keep putting in for that. But we have noticed the claims have increased noticeably the first six months of 2021. So uh, more significantly from where I was sitting was June and July. So we had originally done a forecast using medical mutual reports through June, and Susan called and said, you need to see these weekly invoices for July. And they just skyrocketed. They really took off. Mm -hmm. And so we've updated our forecast to use the July claims as, as we were able to differentiate them from the invoices. Um, we'll get to some of the visuals of this in a moment. There were 26 claimants with claims over $50,000 through the first six months of 2021. These 26 claims represent about 39% of all the claims. And you'll see the magnitude of just a moment. When we do our forecast, this is a reminder of what you'll see in a moment and what we'll bring back when we have the medical mutual renewals. We blend your claims over 24 months because we don't believe in over rewarding great experience or over or under rewarding. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, uh, we try to balance it out. And it's, it's, a, it's a proven underwriting actuarial approach that. You know, it may have an occasional exception, but it tends to play out pretty well. It so, has worked well for us. Yeah, it has worked well for the county. So, uh, how many people are on our plan? We have about 850 uh, employees. We have about 1750, including dependents. Okay. So updating the claims through July. Um, we're forecasting your 2022 budget number to be 12.7 percent above uh, what it is currently. And by budget, I'm talking about the premium equivalency rates that we established for you that from the basis of how do you set employee contributions, where do you set COBRA rates, things along those lines. So this would increase that by about 12.7 percent at this point. That's using claims in July. A little bit of history on where you've been in the past. Last year, we came to about 4.1. 2020, there was no change. It ran well that year. We actually had a decrease forecasted and finance suggested we did well, and we did. Uh, the year before that, we did 0.7. So you've had single digit, very slight increases in relation to what the rest of the world has had the past three years. To your question about where do we look year over year, this is 12 months over 12. So a couple of things are happening here. Let's start with the COVID issue first. 
And that is the COVID months that people generally recognize were March, April, May of 2020. Mm -hmm. So if you look at 12 months over 12 months, as long as they were up here in the current 12 months, it made that, that year look good. Mm -hmm. Now they have now moved down to the lower months. So you'll see March, April, May, those are the claim totals that were much significant, probably significantly lower than any other months. And they are now part of the prior 12 months. So that makes the delta between 20 current, that makes the current 12 months a little inflated over the prior 12 months. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily exactly what your true risk is because the timing of a lot of this is happening. But the thing that we can't ignore this thing's caught our eyes right here. The total claims for the first six months. We've got a number of these that are over a million dollars in total, and that's after we subtract rebates and then stop loss reimbursements. Mm -hmm. To know that then July was about a million seven is the highest one you had since I've been working with you. So Yeah, I've never seen claims yeah. be that high in, in July. That in any period of time for that consistent period of time you know five weeks they were uh, all invoices were over four hundred thousand dollars i don't see the math once usually they're around it's not, two. not there oh no it's not, July's not these there. are just the invoices yeah. that i pay um, my first invoice in august that i just paid this past okay. week was it, over four hundred thousand. is there any indication on disease processes that they're well, talking I about i can tell you because i do yes do fmla in yeah. the county as well and there has been a spike in disease and cancer uh, just in this past year. Uh, it's actually scary from from my point of view. Younger people, uh, that type thing. But we generally have uh, maybe one or two hit the stop loss. Mm -hmm. what, what do we have to do now? Well, there have been some spikes. I can see this. We have data from medical mission for Jim. Mm -hmm. July, so we don't know individually. Right. Oh, know but but this past invoice, I just noticed two new people have hit the stop loss, yeah. and that's just very unusual. Mm -hmm. You know, usually we'll say, all, oh, you know, what are the odds if we are covered for yeah. two? What are the odds that we're going to have five? You know, so that's already increased. COBRA, for instance, you know, COBRA is the federal law that requires us to offer health care coverage. Well, currently there is a provision that allows any employee who has been terminated, uh, I guess their will, for us to provide them free health care coverage through the end of September. We currently have two individuals that are on that. But my entire tenure of being here at Port Beach County, we've had probably three people on COBRA the entire time. Mm -hmm. Currently, we had 10 people on COBRA. I never knew it was free. So even though they're paying their COBRA rates, you know, they if they pay their $2,000 a month COBRA premium to us, but if they have a $5,000 claim, Port Beach County has business. to pick that up. So that is also an increase because people are fearful to be without health care coverage. Right now is why they're picking up the COBRA, even though it is very expensive for them, but they are doing that versus being without health care coverage. So those are things that have also gone into play. You, you will be able to reimburse for that COBRA. The, the, the two individuals we would, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we are getting re reimbursed. It's, yeah. So not again, directly, it's Medicare. Government. We don't have to pay. Um, okay. med it's through a Medicare okay. premium. Yes. But you're saying younger people. Well, younger yeah. people have been um, diagnosed with diseases and cancer. So, yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of that. Yeah, and, um, you know, this is not on positive, but for our claims, we have had a few of our high claimants have left employment yeah. as well. They've either retired. Yeah, we'll show you them in just a second. A lot of this has been medical that we've seen a spike in, and I think they're tied a lot to the type of disease that you've been you know, Susan was talking about. Uh, but you also have other diseases out there that are perennials, and I'll show you that in just a minute. Uh, but I wanted to give you, this is, this is something that just concerns us, is this type of spiking right now as you're trying to set your budget. Right. So we're showing you a 12.67 number today, I want to see what August looks like. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we need to bump that a little more. Uh, I just certainly don't want to undershoot. Through six months this year, when I compare those premium equivalency numbers to what your costs have been, you're running about 104%, a little bit over uh, through June. That's six months. Mm 
know, spread it out over 12. But uh, what is the spike we're in? You know, yeah, is the spike going to come back down? Because self-funding is one of those where you have to kind of weather the storm when you have a spike, and it tends to settle back down. But it's always hard to sit here now and say, well, it'll be fine. And you got a $400,000 a week in August. So this is hitting at a very inopportune time as far as budgeting. Uh, it does create then consideration of what do we do about the plans, do we make changes that we haven't had to make in the past. We've been very fortunate, I think, as a, oh, sure. as a group. Yeah. Uh, it's been fairly steady, and now we're hitting a spike. So our planning needs to be tied here. Do we shift some plan costs? Do we talk about employee contributions? Those types of things. I'll show you those slides in just a second. But I talked about those claimants that were about 50,000. So here are the 26. <coughs> And I'm trying to show you the progression of where they've been through various months. So these same 26 through April, we're at a million five ninety-four. They increased about two hundred eighty thousand through May. That would be just for the May edition. Wow. But in June, those 26 people went up six hundred twenty-two thousand dollars. So we wow. see the we Thank see the wow. June total of a million three. Half of that coming from these 26 folks, which is not to pin at all on them, because I mean, they're still right. only 39% of the overall claims. But I like to look at where, where are these larger claimants, how big are they, and then compare them over here and in the text for the same six month period in 2020. You've had 15 people doing a million five, 91. So that's $905,000 more the six month period, 15 people versus 26. That's a 900,000, there's a million of it right there through those folks. Three of the folks, is, as Susan mentioned, are off the plan. Uh, and there are a couple more that are soon to be off the plan. At this point, if you look at number one, through June, that's the only person that's breached your stop loss level. But you set number two, number three, number four are all hovering around 150 to 180 thousand dollars right now. Mm -hmm. So that's through six months. Conceivably, so, um, they might reach that point <coughs> by the end of the year. So the stop loss takes them off. The pl we don't count them. You yeah. don't fund anymore. Yeah. So they're just going to plan, but you're done for the year. Yeah. But this means the stop loss may be raised also. It's well. <laughs> let's, let's, let's go back and, and let revisit what we, what we decided a year ago on slide eight. When we were thinking about raising it, do you remember we've gone from 175 to 200, and then we said, well, let's go to 225, mm -hmm. because that would save, this is last year's numbers from the summertime. If we went from the 200,000 up to 225, we would save $117,000 of hard monthly cost, cost for the coverage you'd be taking on an extra $25,000 per claim, 200,000 to 225. So your exposure as an employer would be anybody that went from 200 to 225 on paying everything mm -hmm. in that gap. Mm -hmm. and you could absorb 4.69 people get it. And that's kind of where we're at. And the, the risk seemed pretty good. And I, I don't know that we're ready to say we're gonna hit it or exceed it. I think he's, July totals will be interesting as will be the, the August. But it seemed like a reasonable risk at the time that we thought, okay, going to 225 probably isn't a bad, a bad risk. And uh, most carriers will offer you three together. And so you were getting nearly five. It seemed like a decent one. Well, one of the other ways that we look at that too is anything over that, we're just paying the claims directly versus paying the stock wall mm -hmm. And, you know, when you think about it, how much more treatment could somebody have to incur that much more expense, generally, if it's that serious? Yeah. So we'll see another, we'll see something updated on the previous, you know, this one over 50,000, mm -hmm. let's see July. And those medical mutual reports that break this kind of data out for us are usually available the third week of the following month. So for July, we should see those 
Susan and I will stay in touch as to what the week will be like on through August to see if we're having a little more than that. Again, one week so far, 400 weeks. So I did have five draws. I don't know that that last July, July did have five, 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 five pulls. And the last one was $485,000 mm -hmm. on July 30th. So whether Medical Mutual slots any of those five in June or July, it doesn't matter. Those are your claims. So I knew we had them. Mm -hmm. And I might be double dipping one week mm -hmm. in there, perhaps. I don't know, but I'll know that when I get these in July expenses. Last little piece of this assessment of what type of claim activity you've got. This is on slide nine. Oh, by the way, one thing, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, one thing I wanted to point out. Back on slide seven, the $50,000 people. Yeah. Seven of those individuals are repeaters the year before. So they had fifty thousand. They have an ongoing event. And those are the types of illnesses that Crohn's, MS, arthritis, those types of things you're going to see. And those are those are why the specialty drugs. They're expensive. But these are these are in some cases drugs that aren't going to cure anybody. It's, it's just a it's a very expensive. So some of those folks are in those types of categories and others are older. I didn't want to get a lot of specific illnesses. Sure. But, uh, there are some there are repeaters. Sorry about you back to slide nine. Now these are prescription drug claimants that are in excess of twenty thousand. Just wanted to compare twenty 2020 twenty to twenty twenty one. We have four more, no, three more in twenty twenty one. But the total for those folks over 20,000 is 923,000, oh, seven or eight a year ago. So this, I mean, like that 212-792 is one person? One person. One person. Yeah. Yeah. Who happens to be the same 224. Oh, wow. And we're halfway through the year. And uh, those, those, these numbers here are, are, are baked into the over 50. Mm -hmm. This is not an add-on number, but they're included in there. But this is symbolic, I think, of you know, prescription drugs in general. Is it, you think you get $20,000 of prescription drug claims seems like a lot. It's still not. And uh, you start to see more people getting there. And uh, there's some folks in that top tier that are going up quite a bit. So we just thought that might be of something of interest. There are eight repeaters here from 20 to 2021. Eight people. Okay, so with all that, so, uh, I just wanted to walk you through a little bit what our forecast looks like. For okay, the first top, the top part of this thing is taking, again, two years of claims. So we're doing 24 months for claims through July of each 12 month period. And then we're trending the prior period up by 5% for medical and 9% for drug and then weighting it three to one. So it's essentially 75% to your current 12 months, 25% to the product. Right. <clears throat> and again, that's just level out highs and lows. We really didn't have any plan changes under line B, so there's no impact on that. So the claim cost for employees stays the same under C. And then we're doing annual trend. This is inflationary trend for medical and drug. Again, 5% for medical, 9% for drug. And we project this out, it's almost like bank interest. You take the midpoint of the experience period you're looking at, which in this case is uh, February 1st, 21, and then you project out to the midpoint of your forecast period, mm -hmm. which is 7, 1 of 22. And that's 17 months. So you take your annual number, and you create 17 months of that. So under line D, you'll see then the medical is a 1.071, drug is 1.128, so we're inflating those claim costs by that amount, just from the market. Mm -hmm. We end up with a projected claim total under E. F becomes an incurred but not reported claim reserve. This is something that the auditors are probably booking as far as an incurred but not reported claim total. And it's um, something that they would build on a reserve that they would need for some day. If you terminate this program, you'll have claims that were incurred prior to termination to get paid out. So we make a slight adjustment to the IVNR each year. Then we add the COVID margins. So we get down to H. 
and we're voting 4% on medical and 1% on the drug. And prescriptions really didn't get in as impacted by COVID as medical may have. So we're using a factor, but usually at Willis Tower, we go 4 to 5%. So we've got 4% here for you on the medical, 1% on the drug. And that will inflate under I, your adjusted incurred claim total. At that point, we apply the covered employees, 856. So we're projecting that claims, starting point claim under line K, of 12, 10 million 431 for medical, 4 million for drug. So it's $14 million of projected claims. We're also projecting your rebates could hit 670,000. Your admin is going to be flat. So we know you're paying that same amount. We took your to July uh, admin totals and we analyzed them. And this is a one wild card projected stop loss. Yeah. So we're taking your July total and we're assuming a 20% increase, which is, we've done this factor for you every year. Mm -hmm. We get real conservative, we overshoot. Will it hit 20%? May not. I don't know how far you've breached the 225 at this point and to the point that you know, hit a million one. And the MMO is not losing money on this at this point. So the question is, will they come in at 20? Will they come in at 15? The market tends to be 15 to 16 percent. Increase? Loss. Yeah. That's why you get encouraged to move it up. Yeah. Take on a lot more risk with your own. And then the Corey estimate we added in here for uh, this is the uh, patient centered outcome research institute as part of the Affordable Care Act. You and all other employers have to fund it's a per belly button charge you can do annually do it July. Yeah. And it goes into a, a kind of a think tank, national think tank about how to do better outcome strategy for healthcare care delivery. Not a big amount of money, but all employers are kicking into this. And quite honestly, I haven't taken all the years since Obamacare yet. I haven't seen anything come out of it. Right, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. It's a big hit. Vacation plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was supposed to sunset, and then they kicked it back in. So it's like, okay, well, let's we'll have to see what some of those things are. But at any rate, that projects you out to be about $15,340,000 on the line, the bottom line K. Your current Equivalent rates or accrual number is 13.6, so that's where we get the 12.6, 12.7 type number. Again, our, the difference you'll see here is that we're going to forecast your claims on two years. Medical mutual renewal will be one. Medical mutual mm -hmm. comes in over like crazy high or crazy low. Yeah. Just, we've worked it, blending it for you for years, and it's worked well. So, what would that mean then? All of that information. This is kind of a snapshot of what your current rates are. Call it gross premium equivalents here in the top box. Then you go to the middle box, what the employee contributions are currently, and then what the net portage costs are over the right. So the top tier is your current 2021 gross costs, employee contributions, net costs. So the current split down below is employees are paying about 10.7% of the equivalent rates to contributions. The county's picking up 89.3. So if we took this 12.7-ish type increase down on row B, you start to see the $15,340,000 number we projected. If we then took the employees up a proportional increase of 12.7, this is just kind of a what, what would this look like? Kind it, of it would get the plan exactly the same mm -hmm. and just absorb the increase that Willis projects. That's what the cost would be now. Then the net, first of all, the net in the right lower corner for the county would be about a million five increase in exposure. And then the employee piece is here in the middle. So somebody who is single, under the current medical of paying 78 56 a month, it would go up to 88 55 Somebody paying $280 a month for family, we went to 315 and so on. And then per bi-weekly pay increase. Just keep in mind, we have not increased employee premiums for two years. 
which yeah. is amazing to me. Yeah. It absolutely, absolutely is amazing. And it's because it's we increase the stop loss. It, well, we increase the stop loss, but then everybody has, you know, not that it's a, you know, anything that they can help, but we haven't had that many high claims. Yeah. Yeah. But that is one of the things that, um, you know, we were very, very lucky to be able to keep them as, as low as we have so far. So although this looks bad, if you look over the period of time, it's really not that bad because we could have raised it, you know, and we, as you recall, we do a number of these work. We'll give you a two or three of these. And what if we did a little of this, a little of that? But this was just okay, just on this number alone, which, by the way, I'm calling preliminary only because I want to see what August looks right. like. Uh, this is what this would look like. I wonder what that would do to an employee. This gives you that idea. What it would do to the county it gives you that idea. So, plan design alternatives. Uh, what we're thinking, we're going ahead and value some of these differences. So, you know, your current plans here on the left, we got four different variations of tweaking deductibles, out of pockets, co pays. And down at the bottom, you'll see what the, what the impact is. So, you'll notice a lot of them are really not even hitting 1%. So we're not moving the needle an awful lot. The only one that starts to move it a little bit is that middle column where we combine a deductible of 500 and an out-of-pocket of 2,500. That starts to move it about a point and a half, 1.6. So if we were looking to move it more, we'd have to dig deeper into these plans. But I can give you an idea of what those look like. This just gives you an idea. If we wanted to, to change that middle row to get the 1.6, you can look on the previous page and see, you know, the difference that that would make in so much premium as far as we're saving for the bridge count. And the beauty of it being like this and speaking with you folks is if, if, if these don't look deep enough, we can we can do more. Hello, this is a question. I do know, you know, I have a lot of employees uh, reach out to me throughout the year that love our current plan. They're very appreciative. How much do they do? They do. They're very appreciative of it. Uh, but at the same time, uh, my personal opinion is, is by raising the deductible and the maximum out of pocket mm -hmm. uh, causes the users, the people who, you know, use the plan a lot, which does cost us money, it requires them to pay a little more. And then those that, that don't, don't use very don't often, or just like to have their insurance because they might get a sore throat, exactly. that keeps your your copays at a reasonable exactly. amount where they can go to the doctor affordably. And then you know, uh, you know, if somebody has a large out of pocket, they might think twice about having a surgery that may be somewhat elective. That mm -hmm. type thing. You know, obviously if it's life threatening, they're going to go no matter what the deductible is. Right. But um, you know, it just uh, <coughs> kind of proportionately shares it more with the employee. Yeah, because, you know, and, and even raising the deductibles, it's not really Does it make huge, that big of a no. huge increases, and even the out-of-pocket is probably more in line, you know, with everyone else, because over the past years when our, our um, premiums have not raised for the employees, everyone else was getting 8 to 12% increases, and we were fortunate because of our claims and because we kept raising that stop loss gap right. that we didn't have to. So I, I think it's almost expected, but I think it's still within reason. It's still very, very, very good coverage. Yeah, it's very good. I mean, I see co-pays every day. Oh, I do too. And, and every and new, every new employee. This that is I pretty meet, low. Yeah, every new employee that I meet with, you know, I point out the the deductible, and you know, I ask if you have any experience with deductibles, and they're all oh, yes. You know, my, my husband's deductible is two thousand mm dollars. -hmm. Most people are. Yep. You know, so, yeah. Between a thousand and two thousand or five thousand. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. So, uh, that being said, you know, people do expect better benefits when they work for government, uh, I think, because they're public servants, and I think they feel that that is one of the perks. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, there are a lot of things to keep in mind in, in a way, but 
that's why we wanted to bring you this today to just kind to of start give you an idea of plant plant see plant plant so that when we come back we can make some decisions. Yeah. Now I, I have a question as far as the impact of the different <coughs> you see down here the actual area values, but what does that equate to? Oh, that's, oh, I'm on twelve. twelve. Yeah, that's oh, our okay. that's our coolest tower plaza. Okay. The actual way of looking at it. We value the plan. Yeah. In okay. relation to uh, a silver plan. Previous to gold. And we come up with a factor of how it relates to the gold plan of affordable care and the differential between one and the other. What is the gold plan? Does, doesn't that increase costs on certain things, or is that That's there's it. a platinum one above that? There is a platinum one. Yeah, because they you end up paying yeah. a lot. But we yeah. try to we try to set some barometer okay. and say what's our factor of that barometer, so we can compare one over the other. We're actually, well, I'm not, but we're, I'm, I live with actually. <laughs> that's, a, that's their tool. <laughs> so, so we were looking at, we would have to increase 12.7%. Um, so how does this impact these plan design alternatives as so, far as the actual cost to the employee? versus we increase the coverage to help offset some of that. Does it completely zero it out or are we still at a give and take? Okay. It'll still be, so for a 12.6 right now and you get a 1.6 relief off of that, you really go down to 11. 11, yeah. So it's, uh, so it's not moving it an awful lot, but it's, it's chipping away at it. Again, with the theory being if some folks are using it, they'll pay more. Mm -hmm. The other employee that aren't won't well, have to. Okay. Might get a little bit of a break on employee contribution. Is that, is that balance? Yeah. So really, even changing these, it, we're still looking, like you said, on average of about 11, yeah. 10 and a half to 11 percent increase, depending on which alternative we. Now, it, is there anything factored in here as far as the an increase again to the stop loss gap? Where does yeah. that because? Um, I see that that um, renewal is due Correct. now, Correct. <laughs> Correct. So basically. We factored in an assumed 20% increase in our forecast. Okay. At your 2.5 level. But we'll bring you other options to consider at that point if you want to go up again. We've gone up a couple times in two years. Yeah. This might be a year to sit it out. Sit it out. That's what I was thinking. Sit it out. Since we had the top claimants. That made yeah. in the top plane. Yeah, and that's what I say, that's the most that I recall yeah. ever it's having. Long so long. Yeah. And this is one of those that once you get there, you really can't go back. So, right. So right. this might be a year when we start to see what July and August brought out, that we might sit this one out and just stay the increase and save mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. right. But that'll be part of the renewal that'll come from medical mutual of it anymore and they're hoping to have Which that goes then to Willis and he yeah. takes off. So the outstanding steps, next steps for us really are to get, get the stop loss renewal. We have them when we're fixed. The budget forecast will do for you. The only unknown right now is that stop loss pump. Uh, we also want to uh, get the formal claims for July and I don't know, I want to see August too. Oh yes. After this first invoice, we have to. So when do you actually come out? Is it October? No, I'd like to have it by the earliest in September. Yeah. September, September. while okay. we're still doing it. Yeah, we're usually back pretty quick. Okay. The only, the only variable in the renewal really is going to be that stop loss. The, yeah. the dental set, in fact, that things are due to you guys contractually at this point. Um, but, uh, the, uh, so the dental goes down. The dental's down. Yeah, we're not working. Not that we're paying a lot, but we're not worried still, about it right now. But it, it, it is something to consider, though. If medical and RX going up, at least for those that pay dental, I mean, there's some. But I think, I think personally, that the employees surely have to expect there to be a little bit of an increase because we have kept it flat for the last few years. Even the county has absorbed uh, last year. You know, the county absorbed a little bit of an increase, so that they Yeah. <laughs>
we've, we've been very fortunate. I mean, just knowing in the private sector what insurances have done over the last several years. I mean, we know all good things come to an end, and even the 11% compared to what other premiums are. I mean, I still think it's just so they on the page that has the service information on there, we do participate in that. So our yeah. information is being involved in that. And I do have a report from the survey if you're all interested. It's very in depth and detailed with the insurance, but I'll be glad to give you To your point, private sector where you've got those thousand, mm -hmm. fifteen hundred dollar deductibles, and those 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 rates are going up fifteen, twenty percent. Oh, I know. I, I, I serve on several boards and I, I know what they're doing. That's why I'm saying it. 11% sounds high, but not in comparison to what I'm seeing elsewhere. Can we be back about the first week of September yeah. or something like that? Okay. Well, at least have this moment with you guys <coughs> talk about it now. So, yeah. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Yes, we appreciate all you guys do and helping us absolutely make good decisions and have great plans for our employees because you know we have to hear that we don't pay the best but a lot of people do take into consideration the, the benefit plans you got a good, you got that, a good message yeah you know, all right thank you well thank you we'll thank look you. forward to seeing you back next month okay thank you all right all right I mean, um, my car I is, um, oh, I'm fine, huh? are you know, right. not drivable? Yeah. I'm fine. Girl, oh my I'm getting ready for fine a me. wedding. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because here's the thing. Guy. I keep going over and over I'm this. Guy. And Two. I was yeah. next to Daughter. the truck, but yeah, I was like older, towards the back married. corner. Yeah. If I had been right next to him, it would have gone gone through my windows and all yes. of that. Oh, yeah. It's like I was thirty one when I got married. Wow. So, yeah. You know. I I, so, I skipped the first marriage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's funny, I was looking at You the, skipped the first oh, marriage. Then, yeah, um, when all my friends were getting married and oh, gas tank tank sprung I just skipped all that. I got oh my god. god. Then she like would let me yeah. in my own <laughs> car. <laughs> <laughs> would let me sit in my own car and have my sleeping car medic truck. Oh for my own safety. Yeah. So I see you're getting your plants going though. I was still learning how to go through all that. That was it. Let's see who all was in here. How are you doing? They okay. shut down you? Interstate yeah. 76. What's new at in uh, was it well, yeah, Deerfield? Kind of quiet now. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, man, I, I like your uh, Excuse me, gentlemen. Um, your hall. So you guys are put a gas station or something right there. Hey, how are you? Yeah, I'm just working right there. a big gas station. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, gas pumps. Ooh, ooh, four oh, decent oh, pumps. Yeah. Good. One will be for Rec 90 fuel yeah, wheels, just pure fuel. Gasoline, uh, yeah, yeah. with no ethanol in it for boats. And who, who is doing it? The guy that owns the one in Palm Harbor right there, in Nemitz Little Village right there. His name's Patel. Okay. He's got two projects going on at the same time. Beings. Not, not one in Deerfield and one, I forget what the other one is, but exactly identical buildings and everything. Well, I, I like that because it, it really out that way. There's no gas stations no. at all. No. We've been so in, in your own gas station. 14, yeah. Well, and then what's even better is instead of Mahoney County and all those others, Columbia and all them getting all their gas tax, we can fill them. So they're going to be able to do semis there? Or no? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You say that they're going to have uh, gas with no ethanol? Yeah. And as rec, we call it, he calls a Rec 90 fuel, which is 90 octane, no ethanol. And that's good for like your boats and stuff over winter, right? Snowmobiles. Like when you put uh, it over winter time, then you don't worry about it freezing. They recommend it for planes on Yeah, any, yeah, any, any long motor. Two cycle gas with that, and it doesn't go yeah, bad in winter, like the ethanol it's gas. Yeah, I have a rental. It's from the, uh, 
Yeah, we worked Collision a long seven. time to get that guy to See, bite and he spent over two hundred fifty thousand dollars just buying property to be able to do this. He's gonna have like two point three million dollars invested when he's done or more. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. You get that email about the sewer water grant? Yeah. I just got that last night. You guys night. gonna try doing that? I don't know, I gotta I gotta read that every step. Well you about. better read it real quick because you got till uh, the sixteenth. Sixteenth seventeenth already. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, it came out it came out quick and yeah. then uh, come out Tuesday and we've got to have it turned in. Knowledge is coming out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys. See you, Dave. Good Lord, what are you doing here? I don't know. How you been? So is that today's secret? No, it's not too late. Okay, so they got my opioid cellar. Yeah, there was your one story I saw in there. Yeah, about 50 grand. No, it was about the opioid settlement. Yes, that's right. Um, the, which they're about to accept also. Good. It's a drop in the bucket. It is, but I mean, it's never enough to cover everything. Well, it's only with three of the drug companies. Yes. So there's stuff that's still pending over the Well, some of the companies, I think Purdue is one of them that's in bankruptcy. Not really. Yeah, that's the that's a legal Well, yeah, but the thing is when you're in bankruptcy, all of those settlements go through the court. Yeah, but they already have Commissioners approved the August 5th regular meeting minutes. Second, roll call. Sabrina? Yes. Vicky? Yes. Tony? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion the Board of Commissioners approves the execution of the Drug Free Workplace the Airport Improvement Program sponsor certification, the execution of the certification and disclosure regarding potential conflicts of interest to Airport Improvement Program sponsor certification, and the selection of consultants, Airport Improvement Program sponsor certification 
documents concerning the application and grant process being pursued by the Portage County Regional Airport Board of Trustees as presented by the Prosecutor's Office. The Board further authorizes Commissioner Christian Bennett, President of the Board, to sign such documents on behalf of the Board of Commissioners. Second. Roll call. <laughs> yes. Good job, Tony. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to the Board of Commissioners and acknowledge receipt of the Kennel Disposition or a Disposition uh, Report and Take Report for July 19th, July 25th, 2021, as presented by the Chief Dog Warden Dave McIntyre. Second. Roll call. Yes. Vicky. Yes. Tony. Yes. Okay, I'll make a motion to the Board of Commissioners to acknowledge receipt of the amended Certificate of Estimated Resources dated July 27, 2021, as presented by the Portage County Budget Commission. Second. Roll call. Sabrina. Yes. Vicky. Yes, Tony. Yes. I'll make a motion to the Board of Commissioners to acknowledge receipt of the official Certificate of Estimated Resources dated August 2, 2021, as presented by the Portage County Budget Commission. Second. Roll call. Sabrina. Yes. Vicky. Yes, Tony. Yes. Um, I'll make a motion. The Board of Commissioners authorize the electronic filing of the Porter Self Grant Report to the Ohio Office of Criminal Justice Services for the Domestic Violence Intervention Project for the BAWA Grant 2019 WFBA 2822A for the grant period ending June 30th, 2021, as requested by Donnie Buchanan, Family and Community Services. Second. Roll call. Brandon? Yes. Vicki? Yes. Tony? Yes. I'll make a motion. The Board of Commissioners acknowledge receipt of the Penal Disposition Report and Intake Report for August um, 2nd through the 8th, 2021, as presented by the Chief Dog Warden, Dave McIntyre. Second. Roll call. Yes. Vicky. Yes. Tony. Yes. Okay. In accordance, I'll make a motion in accordance with Ohio Revised Code, Section 325.07. The Board of Commissioners acknowledge receipt of the monthly report of proceedings and transactions for July 2021, as presented by the First County Sheriff's Department. Second. Roll call. Sabrina. Yes, Vicki. Yes, Tony. Yes. Okay, I'll make a motion in accordance with the Ohio Revised Code, Section 325.07. The Board of Commissioners acknowledge receipt of the Sheriff's Transporting Report for July 2021 as presented by the Portage County Sheriff's Department. Second. Roll call. Sabrina. Yes, Vicki. Yes, Tony. Yes. Okay, I'll make a motion. The Board of Commissioners acknowledge receipt of the Portage County Investment Reconciliation for the month of July 2021 as presented by the County Treasurer. Second. Roll call. Sabrina. Yes, Vicki. Yes, Tony. Yes. Okay, I'll make a motion. The Board of Commissioners acknowledge receipt of August 10th, 2021 certificate of the County Auditor that the total appropriations from each fund do not exceed the official estimated resources for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2021, as determined by the Budget Commission of the Portage County, of Portage County and presented by the County Auditor. Second. Roll call. Sabrina. Yes. Vicki. Yes. Tony. Yes. I'll make a motion the authorized to authorize the application and accept the 2019 Ohio Drug Law Enforcement Subgrant on behalf of the Portage County Drug Task Force Grant Number 2019-DLLEF-5846. Second. Roll call. Sabrina. Yes. Vicki. Yes. Yes. Okay, I'll make a motion to amend resolution 20-0808 dated December 17, 2020, acceptance of courses, employees, dishonesty, and faithful performance of duty policy instead of individual surrogate bonds for officers, employees, and appointees. Second. Okay, roll call. Sabrina. Yes, Vicki. Yes, Tony. Yes. Okay. Oh my goodness. We got one minute to spare, but come on up, Ms. Reams. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I happen to notice that on the agenda today, there is a journal entry. The Portage County Board of Commissioners hereby approves and defers to the prosecutor's discretion <coughs> concerning motions previously filed, and that may be needed to be filed in the future concerning the Ohio Open Meeting Act matters, including motions pursuant to RC 2323.51 and RT 2323.52. Now, we know who that is addressed to. And that it, there's only one person going to open meetings that uh, litigation here in, in Portage County that I'm aware of. Uh, and we know what the two statutes are. One is frivolous conduct, and the other is vexatious litigators. And it's clear that the intent is that the prosecutor's office wants you to defer or delegate your authority to them to make your decisions for you. And we, we know that that's illegal. And we also know that it's a violation of the rules of professional conduct for the prosecutor's office to ask you for such 
uh, a resolution that would say thermal entry. So, you know, um, in the, there have been other places that have tried that, uh, uh, delegating their authority to off to somebody else, yeah, you know. And, and there's case law out there, and they've found it. Uh, there was a school district, a school board out there that did that, and it ended, ended up with three of the members being removed from office for that, for gross neglect, it's considered gross neglect. Um, you know, we didn't, didn't vote for the prosecutor to be a commissioner. We voted for you all to be the commissioner, not the prosecutor's office. So I'm going to strongly recommend that you do not pass that general entry because it's going to create, if you do, there will be a lot of trouble. Thank you. Okay, do we have the sheriff's office out there? Is there any other um, public comment, Abe? Come on in. Come on in, Mr. Pound. Front center. Front center. Okay. Hi, Kaylee. Hi. Department of Justice for the BJA fiscal year 2021 Edward Byrne uh, Memorial Justice Assistant Grant Program uh, local solicitation on behalf of the Portage County Sheriff's Office. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Do you have any comments on that? Basically, it's going to be used to help fund our SWAT program um, and acquiring some night vision equipment for each of the members. Okay. That's what we're going to be on it. And some of the nighttime capabilities, low light capabilities, and safe, be safer in operation. Is it so, like goggles or something like that? Um, it's actually a monocular, so it's just it mounts to the helmet. It swings oh, down over okay. your non-dominant eye, okay. and then you still maintain some of your natural light vision. Okay. Your, uh, Officer Pounce, do we currently have any of that equipment? Um, currently, we I think we have one. Um, it was just an older model that's yeah. been kind of sitting around the office collecting us for years. But. <laughs> and, and I see there's no match required, is that correct? Okay. Um, How many units is that? Is that $25,000? Um, with this one, it, it'd be roughly five. Oh, five units. Yeah. And then uh, Kaylee explained, I had asked what the 3% set aside was for. It's like a, a, a our subscription for database or something, is that correct, Kaylee, or Stephen, if you were yeah. to? No, it's, so what that would be used for is to become, or kind of work towards becoming diverse compliance. It's a national incident-based uh, uh, data reporting system through oh. the FBI. Okay. Um, all the surrounding county agencies and a lot of the PDs and the surrounding counties are certified through that. Mm -hmm. So it would just be one more step for us to become a little bit more. How long does it take you to get certified? Um, that I don't have an answer to. I know we have a, a the grant duration of the two years mm -hmm. to work on it. Okay. Is it four? Mm -hmm. four you got four years to accomplish that? I think it was four. Yeah. And Stephen, is that a, an ongoing um, expense for that database to um, belong to that? Or is that a one time? I believe it's a one time thing. Do you yeah. know, Kaylee? I'm not sure. Okay. I'm, I'm working on trying to get some more information on okay. it. It's just not none of us up here. Yeah. yeah. What's the life expectancy of the uh, night vision? Well, as long as we maintain them. They're pretty good. Mm -hmm. And you know, I know you don't know the answer to this, but just, you know, I'd like someone to get back with us about the body cams. Sure. Because sure. supposedly there was a grant for that, and I, I just seems like it's dropped every time we talk about I it. I just talked to the chief yesterday okay, about those. Great. That there is a grant coming up that possibly do that but it's not going to be until September or October okay so the grants would be better than the one that we've looked at in the past oh, good. but there's about four four hundred thousand four hundred fifty thousand wow. body cams dash cams and then the computer the cloud okay uh, yeah it, it's not so much the equipment cost I mean it's it's costly it's it's you have to continually pay to store storage. the storage that's what um, prevents a lot of departments from getting it because it's an ongoing expense and it's expensive. That's why 
I think in the past, the, the former sheriff did not pursue it, even though there, there's been multiple grants out there. A lot of the time, I just saw Kent's gonna be, yeah. I think, yeah, being a grant. Right. And, and again, I think it's because, I think Aurora was, has them, and I think they were the first, but I think they got a grant, but they were the, one of the first departments, I think, in Portage to get them. That was years ago. It, it's, it's costly for the storage, which is ongoing. Okay. Is there a match to that grant? Do you know? Tom? No, the one that he's talking about coming from the state, right. and it's those who have never had body cams or dash cams. Never. Or no, they're and they have never had it. They're eligible for it and move top of the list. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, then you answered my question. Thank you. <laughs> I just had this discussion yesterday afternoon. Okay. Thank you, Officer Poundstone. I will make a motion to authorize the application um, to the U.S. Department of Justice for the BJA. Fiscal year 2021, Edward Byron um, Memorial Justice Assistance Grant Program local solicitation on behalf of the Portage County Sheriff's Office. Second. Roll call. Sabrina? Yes. Vicki? Yes. Tony? Yes. All right. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Thank you, you yes. Haley, for all your help you. with the grant. Thank you. We appreciate that. Okay. Next we have. Mr. Majuri. Good question. Come on up. We are going to go into okay. executive session. But come on up. You can come on up. We can make and a motion. In accordance with Ohio Revised Code 121.22G3, motion to enter an executive session and conference with the attorney for the public body concerning disputes involving the public body as subject to pending court actions. Second. Okay, roll call. Tony. Yes. Vicki. Yes. Sabrina. Yes. 